Hey there. So you have a vocal issue. If you Google it long enough, you are probably going to find at least a couple of vocal coaches that offer the total different advice to deal with that issue. What's right? Well, there are two questions to ask to find out what really is the right thing to do. Which one works and which one works the best? Today, I want to give you seven wrong ideas about singing because they don't work. There is lively controversy in what is deemed good vocal training or dealing with a vocal issue. And different teachers embrace different viewpoints and pedagogic philosophies. There really is more than one way to effectively accomplish training a voice or fixing a problem. However, there are some techniques that actually limit and sabotage vocal ability and health, and it can even damage the voice. So here from my practical viewpoint are seven wrong ideas about singing. First, when phonating, which is simply making a vocal sound, the belly should go out. Not in my experience. Your breath support and control are enabled and balanced by the low belly coming in when sounding the voice. Belly out, your voice is going to feel less controlled and your voice will continue to strain to try to make it right. You'll probably run out of air. Now, note that I'm talking about the low belly coming in, not the high belly. The low belly below the belt line is what should be coming in. The high belly, right where your rib cage is, should actually expand. Let me let you hear the difference between these two. My whole belly out. Thousands of miles from the side of your face. The low belly in. Thousands of miles from the side of your face. See, it sounds smoother and it certainly feels better. The breath lasts longer. Everything goes better. The second wrong idea about singing, that a singer should inhale from nose only. Oh, I've heard this a lot, but I have to come down on the side of nope. I've gotten a lot of work from singers who've gotten themselves in all kinds of vocal trouble from chest breathing that comes from inhaling through nose only when singing. This notion comes from sports training where you inhale from the nose to moisten the breath and from doctors and alternative health people who tell us that it creates more nitrous oxide, which is good for the whole body, and it is. Oops, I mean nitric acid, N-O, not nitrous acid, which is N2O and is laughing gas. However, inhaling from both nose and mouth will result in much better results for singing and speaking. And it's not a good idea to sing while you're jogging or lifting weights anyway. Just a quick little opening of nose and mouth should do the job and also let you inhale silently. No guppy breaths. Third wrong idea about singing. You should never drink coffee if you want to sing. Uh, if this was true, I would not be able to sing. Is coffee dehydrating? Yes. Is it debilitating to all singers? In moderation, like one morning cup, far enough away from performance time, and if the singer is not overly sensitive to caffeine, then it's not a problem I've run into. Note, if you are sensitive to caffeine, stay completely away from it. In all cases, though, don't drink it close to or during performance. That goes for alcohol, too. Alcohol in performance may mask anxiety, but it will dehydrate your voice, and unbeknownst to you, it will play havoc with your vocal control and intonation. And if you recorded the performance and listened to it the next day, you'd get a good reality check about the benefits of alcohol in performance. And 
then the next wrong idea about singing. It takes at least a month of breath training to prepare a vocal student to sing a song. Nope. When I can correct a singer's posture, breathing problems can instantly disappear. Do breathing exercises help? Sure, especially with certain singers. But in my experience, even simple rib stretching and flexing can help instantly improve the singing breath. Vocal exercises can and should be used to memorize better posture and breath strategies so that you don't have to think about them in performance. But when they are employed, vocal improvement should be immediate. Next wrong idea about singing. Singers should sing with your arms hanging limp and still at your sides. No. Sadly, this is a common belief of some choir directors, musical theater directors, and recording artists that gets me a lot of work. Turning the arms into what I call rib anchors is one of the worst things you can do to a singer or speaker because it drops the rib cage and gives the diaphragm too much slack to work the inhale and control the exhale well. That sabotages everything the voice does. Instead, if arms are to be positioned at your sides for visual reasons and aesthetics, try hanging your arms down with your elbows a little farther back than usual, maybe your thumb and your thighs. That should help stretch the rib cage and give you a little more control. Or if you're at the Grammys and you've got the smoke billowing up beneath your feet and they want you to be still, you could grab the mic stand and help yourself widen your rib cage. There's ways to do it. And the sixth wrong idea about singing is that the face should be quiet and still. Too much facial expression detracts from the performance. Nada. I've actually heard this from misinformed engineers, performance coaches, and choir directors. Without an active face, listen to me, you will never sing or speak as well as you could with communicative facial movement, especially eyes and eyebrows. Try freezing your face and singing a short phrase. Frere Jaca, Frere Jaca, dormez-vous. Okay. <laughs> Then overactivate your facial language and sing it again. Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques, dormez-vous. Okay, that unlocks all kinds of ability that you didn't have before. And today's seventh and final wrong idea about singing. You can't learn to sing unless you were born a singer. AKA, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Au contraire, mon chéri. If you can talk, you can learn to sing. In every instance of tone deafness that I've encountered, and I've encountered several, all it took was consistent target practice to train the ear-challenged singer to aim at pitch. The question isn't, can you learn to sing? It's, how bad do you want to? I can fix you, I can if you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to check out the other vocal training videos I've got for you on my channel. I can Thanks. Fix you. I can fix you. I can teach you. I can make you see the light. You can run, but I can get you. Trust me, I can fix you. Right.